It took me five years to graduate from college. I was a business major that failed accounting and decided to become a math teacher. Try and figure that one out. I can remember feeling so far behind, like I was never going to catch up. And that's the trap. If there's one thing I wish I knew, like really knew, like the type of thing that you don't just know in your head, but you know in your heart, I wish I knew that we're we were all running our own race. I spent a lot of time running somebody else's race. Heck, I was even watching others in a whole different league and I have regrets. I regret every outfit I changed because I was afraid it was too weird. I regret not speaking up in a staff meeting because I thought my comment had no value. I regret not being blacker because I thought I had something to lose. I regret not sharing Jesus because I thought the person would think I was too religious. I regret not being 100% Esther. I regret depriving the world of all of me. Before 2019 started, I made a commitment to myself to be 100% me all day, er, day. If that's pink glasses with tassels, let's do it. If that's asking my admin for a new prep for the fourth year in a row, let's do it. If that's being vulnerable and telling my friends that teaching is taking a toll on me, then that's what it is. If that's making a reflection video to mark a new decade, let's go. Sure, I have regrets, but I serve a God who is about redemption. He's about taking what is wasted and bringing it to life. Joel 2.25 says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. If it was up to me, I would be married with three kids and trying to adopt two more. Because for some reason, we have made marriage the pinnacle of all relationships, as if all other relationships I have cultivated are worthless. I still want to be married and raise some kids, so calm down. But when I look at my life and its richness... It has been found through all these people God has knit together in my life. I think about when I was 18 and I had surgery and my best friend would come over every day with snacks while I was in bed and we would watch Netflix back when they still mailed DVDs to your house. I think about church on Sundays and floating through the lobby and being passed by so many familiar faces who have prayed with me and laughed with me young and old and how it feels like home. And afterwards, my weekly tradition with my brothers where we pick a new restaurant every week. What food and flavors will we try? And what stories will we share about our parents this week? I think about my girls, the ones that lotion your knees when you're ashy. The ones who will go to the movies with you with two hours notice. The ones who I've walked down the aisle with cheered their kids on at soccer, the ones whose homes are always open, and who've lived near and far but the bond still sticks, the older ones who have taken the time to hold the door open for me along the way, even the ones I've met online. I think about my family that is too big to number. I think about our wild group chats about how all of us are still single. I think about the bravery it took to plan my aunt's funeral and how wiped we all were emotionally for months. I think about how states and oceans aren't big enough or strong enough to weaken our bond. I think about our grandfather who couldn't read and memorized parts of the Bible and passed it on to his children and they passed it on to us. And I think about how I will pass it on to my children often. I think about my students, especially from the first years of teaching overseas in Panama, and how their love for me and my love for them is forever etched in my heart, and how they changed me. 
how I look forward to keeping up with their lives. When I look at life that way, I have no regrets. I have lived the life set before me. The heart of a man plans his way, but it is the Lord who establishes his steps. Proverbs 